Okay, question six. What are we told? We're told that Harry wants to rent out boats at his local park. He can use linear programming to determine the number of each type of boat he should buy. Let X be the number of two-seater boats and let Y be the number of four-seater boats. One of the constraints is that X add Y must be bigger than or equal to 90. Explain what this constraint means. Well, if X is the number of two-seater boats and Y is the number of four-seater boats, X add Y, this uh, expression here, must be the total number of boats, and this is saying must be at least, so bigger than or equal to, at least 90. So let's write that down in a, in a sentence. So the total number of boats must be at least 90. Okay? Um, another constraint is that 2x is less than or equal to 3y. Explain what this constraint means. I always find it easier to do the following. If 2x is less than or equal to 3y, I will make y the subject in this case. So what I will do, the first thing I will do is rewrite that as 3y is bigger than or equal to 2x. And I'll divide by 3 and say that y is bigger than or equal to 2 thirds x. Now I just read it as I see it. So I'm going to say the number of y, remember what y was, it was the four seaters. So the number of four seater boats must be at least two thirds of the two seater boats. So I'm going to write the number of four seater boats must be at least two thirds the number of two seater boats. Okay, I always find it easier to do that. It just stops you making any silly mistakes. Okay, so they're the first two parts done for us. Okay, to do about constraints there. It says a, a third constraint is as follows, and it says represent the three constraints on the diagram in the answer booklet here, and label the feasible region R. So let's write down each one of our constraints. So let's show the examiner clearly what we're doing. So constraint one. Well, constraint one was x plus y is bigger than or equal to 90. So x add y is equal to 90. We're gonna use that there. So to plot that, if I let my, my if I let x equal zero, then y would be ninety. And similarly, if I let y be zero, x would be ninety. So I could plot myself zero against ninety and ninety against zero, and they'd be on my on that line there. So I'd do that. So zero with ninety is here. Ninety with zero is here. It's bigger than or equal to, so it's a straight line. It's not dotted. So I'm going to draw a line between the two of these and I want a bigger than or equal to 90 so I want above the line so I'm going to shade below this thing I don't want. So this is the stuff I don't want here. Okay, so there's the first one and I'm going to write on here x add y equals 90. Keep track of that. The next one was this one. Now I'm going to write that in the way I did up here. I'm going to write for the next one constraint 2. Two, I'm going to write y is equal to two thirds x. So if I made x equal zero, y would certainly equal zero. And let's make x something that can be divided by three. Let's make x, I don't know, 90, let's say. Y, two thirds of 90 would be 60. So two coordinates I can plot are zero, zero, and 90 against 60. So let's do that. Zero, zero. And 90 against 60, 90 against 60 would be there. So I'm going to draw a straight line. It's not dotted because it's a, a, le a less than or equal to. So there we go. And I'm not going to use this version to determine. I'm going to use this version here. I wanted y bigger than or equal to 2x. So I want above the line when it's in that form. So I want above the line. So I don't want below the line. So I'm going to shade everything below the line. I do not want that there. And what I should do, obviously, is I need to extend this region a bit further like that. Okay? 
So they're the first two. The last one is y less than or equal to x add 30. So I'm going to write constraint 3. y, what was it? Uh, less than or equal to x add 30, less than or equal to x add 30. So if I made x be equal to 0, y would be equal to 30. And let's make x something like, I don't know, 60, and y would be equal to 90. So we can plot 0, 30, and 60 with 90. So 0, 30, and 60 with 90. 0 with uh, 0 across and 30 up. OK, and um, 60 across and 90 up. So 60 across and 90 up, which would be uh, here like that. So I'm going to draw between these. It's not a dotted line. And I want y less than or equal to that, so I want below the line, so I'm going to shade above the line here. OK, so the only thing not shaded is this feasible region here. OK, so our feasible region is as follows. Now notice, it's got two vertices, which I'm going to label A and B, but it's unbounded. We don't know where the end points of these are. It stretches on forever. OK, so anyway, we've done... Uh, this first part here for four marks. Now it says next, each two-seater boat, two-seaters was X, remember, cost £100. Each four-seater boat cost £300, they were Y. Harry wishes to minimise the total cost, write down the objective function C in terms of X and Y. It's really easy, that one, for part, what's this, part D. So part D, these are always similar. The cost is going to be £100 for each X, and £300 for each y, so summing them up is going to be 100 multiplied by x plus 300 multiplied by y. That's very straightforward there. Now, actually solving this problem. Determine the number of each type of vote Harry should buy. You must make your method clear and state the minimum cost. Okay, so we're trying to minimise this. So, we're trying to minimise C is equal to 100x add 300y. And so the answer, the answer will occur at either vertex A or B. Because if I'm trying to minimize this here, it's going to occur at one of these two. We don't know the other vertices. The answer is always at a vertex. So we could either use the point testing or the um, um, objective line. I'm going to use point testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say at point A what two equations are, uh, are happening at the same time. So this one here, sorry, would have been y equals x at 30. And this one here is going to be y is equal to 2 thirds x. Okay, so at point A... Um, this one and this one are meeting. So x add y equals 90 and y equals 2 thirds x. So we can solve these two simultaneously. If I stick uh, y is 2 thirds x in this one, so 1 and 2. So if I sub 2 in 1, I would get, two -third, I would get x add 2 thirds x, which is 5 thirds x is equal to 90. So that would tell me that x is equal to 90 divided by 5 thirds. So I can just do uh, 90 divided by 5 thirds and I would get 54. So x would be equal to 54 and y would equal 2 thirds of that. So 2 thirds of 54, if I multiply that by 2 thirds, I'm going to get myself 36. So 54, 36. And what's the value of the objective function there? At A, C would be equal to 100 multiplied by X, which is 54, plus 300 multiplied by Y, which is equal to 36. So what I could do is 100 multiplied by 54, add uh, 36 multiplied by 300, and I get myself 16,200, so 16,200. Now we need to do the same thing at point uh, B. So at point B, what two equations are holding at point B? X add, uh, y is x add 30 and x plus y is 90. So we're going to solve x add y is 90 
and y is equal to x at 30. So if we solve these 1 and 2, again we can put 2 into equation 1 and we would get that x add x add 30 is equal to 90, 2x add 30 is equal to 90. Subtract 30 off both sides and we divide by 2, we're going to get that x is equal to 30 and y would therefore be 60, substituting them into one of these. So 30 and 60. So if we test at point B, at B, C would be equal to 100 multiplied by the x number which is 30 plus 300 multiplied by the y number which is 60. And if we work that on the calculator, that is 100 multiplied by 30, add 300 multiplied by 60 and we get ourselves uh, 21,000, so 21,000. Because we're minimizing, uh, point A is the answer. So therefore, we're going to state, therefore, the, the minimum cost is uh, 16,200 at A. So therefore, this is saying the number of two-seaters, we have to state in context, should be equal to um, the number of two-seaters should be equal to 54 and the number of four-seaters should be equal to, looking up here, was 36. And just check we've done everything here. Uh, determine the number of each type. We stated that and you must make your method clear and state the minimum. We've done all that.